Alright, we're going to run through an initial installation of JBoss Developer Studio 5 Beta 2 using AS 7.1 for now. First thing I'm going to do is say open with and Java platform SE binary because by default if I just say open it pops up WinRAR because I normally like to look through my jars as opposed to run my jars. But in this case it's actually an installation jar. I'm going to say open with Java platform SE. Hit next. Agree to the terms and conditions. Hit next. I'll go ahead and put it in the directory that I'm sitting in to make sure I can't I don't lose it. And getting started too. Uh, JBDS five beta two. Hit OK. Alright, and next, would you like to create the directory? Yes. Now this is one trick. Um, if you notice the default JVM on this machine is a JRE. We actually need a JDK. And I need, and I've installed that in a different location on this machine. That way I can have multiple versions of the JDK on this machine. Tools, Java, and I'm going to pick the 32 bit because I'm using the 32 bit installer of JPDS. And the reason I'm using 32 bit is so I have access to the visual page editor. I'm going to leave these locations uh, scanned for platforms and servers, leave that blank for now. Hit next. And then next again, let it go through its installation process, pushing it out to disk. This will take a few moments. Now it's finished. Hit next. I will not create shortcuts. I tend to have tons of those installations, so I don't need any shortcuts. And done. If I need to uninstall, I can always come into the uninstaller and run this jar file. That'll put everything, rip everything back off the machine. But for now, I'll drill down on Studio and then jbdevstudio.exe. Get it loaded. I'll go ahead and put my workspace in the same getting started to directory here. And let's just call this um, workspace one. I tend to have lots of workspaces. So start with one, go up to ten. Loading the workbench. And then you notice we'll have be prompted for anonymous usage data. Please say yes. We use that information uh, to help us understand exactly what operating systems and platforms and JVMs and screen resolutions. No personal data is provided, but allows us to actually QA our, our, our development tools better. Now I'm going to hit getting started with JBoss Central. Open this up. All right, you can see it makes a network connection to pull down the latest news, latest blogs. Even this right here came from a network connection, and that allows us to populate this screen, and it's part of our getting started experience. You notice the servers tab is blank. And I could add a new server here, but I'll leave that alone for now. And I'm going to hit the HTML5 project. This is a Maven archetype. And from that Maven archetype, we understand that we need a server runtime, which is not configured inside the IDE. And I'm instead of download and install, which would work, I'm going to just hit install and then go select by hitting add the, um, the runtime that I want. So I'm going to, it's already in the getting started to directory. And OK there, and then OK, and then OK. Now that's taken care of. I'm going to take the defaults here. Let's just call this the PO5 demo. And next, and finish. Now to go through using that Maven archetype to then create the Maven project and then do a full import of the Maven project inside of Eclipse, inside JBoss Developer Studio here. And, and of course configure their facets appropriately. So in this case of this PO5 application, it's not only a JavaScript HTML5 front end, there's also a Java E6 back end to it, including things like JAXRS and JPA. We want to make sure all those tools are configured appropriately so they can immediately use them within, um, within the IDE. Eclipse has this concept called facets, which um, can be on or off, and I'll, I'll show you, I'll pop up, pop up the facets dialog as soon as this is done.
now it's finished and I can right click on here go to properties then type in facets helps if you spell it correctly and you can see this is a JavaScript Java dynamic web module JPA based project and has JBoss Maven integration so you want to make sure those things are checked on and by default they are and I can now say right click and run as on server your server's already down here in my servers tab hit finish it'll start the server deploy that application and then pop up the internal Eclipse browser nice thing it is it is using a full Maven build to create that war file so the Maven integration is really invisible at this point Maven made the magic happen you just didn't have to worry about that All right, but you can go look at the Maven POM XML if you need to so there's the desktop version this is a single page application that supports both desktop and mobile we also have a mobile browser simulator if I click on this icon here it'll load the same URL we have back here in Eclipse but now you'll see the mobile version of it and if I add a person here alright helps if I type my own name correctly one two three three there we go and register and if I just refresh this page it's a very long page there we go you can see that person's been added so now the final step certainly we can explore the code that's written you know in here there's nice uh, you know this is a nice HTML5 application you can kind of see it here in the visual page editor by default it shows up blank here and that is because it says display equal none so if you just delete that you can now see it visually here and then you can navigate to it and point out the HTML5 features like here's the email type field telephone type field and that's very important when it comes to working in the environment of, um, uh, of an HTML5 application on a mobile device so let's see if we can deploy it up to the cloud go to back to JBoss Central and I'm gonna hit close here we do not want to save our changes I was just trying to show you the visual page editor click on open shift application let me log myself in I do have an account that's already provisioned out there at OpenShift and I've already set up my SSH keys because I've used um, this machine before alright and we'll call this po 5 demo I like naming my applications on OpenShift the same as what they are in the workspace just easier for me to keep up with hit next and we'll say we'll create use an existing project so this is the project from the workspace mapping it to the application up at OpenShift so it's creating the application let's go see what it looks like up at OpenShift here alright let's go look what we have I'll just refresh my browser okay there's the PO5 demo application so it's been created you can see this guy here is still waiting for a response but it's coming and let's click here so even though the PO5 demo application has been created in other words it's in the database it is not yet provisioned and then um, in other words the app server is not stood up and this and the DNS entries have not been propagated so we have to wait a bit for the DNS entries to be propagated so I can actually get out here and hit it with my browser and you can see uh, JBoss Developer Studio this new OpenShift Express application wizard is also still waiting for this to come through alright we just have to wait a few moments it can take up to two or three minutes in some cases or it seems to to get our application stood up and um, it's still looking for it and I might just hear and hit refresh just to see when it comes online it also the amount of time it takes um, really depends on how fast the DNS can propagate so this is obviously not something you're gonna do every 30 seconds creating a new application you're gonna create your application develop 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 deploy locally interact with it locally using the mobile browser simulator and using uh, you know Eclipse's local or using the Eclipse browser or Chrome or Firefox testing your application until you think it's ready look there we go we got it up there now so let's see when um, all right fantastic it found it too hit OK and uh, yes RSA fingerprint yes and then I have a password associated with my SSH key let me get that right hit, all right fantastic there we go and if you look down here at the servers tab you can see it says PO5 on OpenShift server so that's that project and this is the easiest way to publish so by default 
you get the default application. That's what it looks like. Um, but I want to send up all this code, and the easiest thing to do is right click and say publish. So this pro workspace has been associated with that remote OpenShift project, and now I just have to deploy it. And so it's going through that process, and let me show you the OpenShift console, which is, let me see here, Command 3, OpenShift Express console. And now I can navigate, and you can kind of see out here, there's the PO5 application, or PO5 demo. I can say right click and remote console. And that actually will look, let me look at the console on the server side, on that remote server. Okay, it looks like it's deployed now. Um, Let's see, come back and refresh the browser. All right, fantastic. All right, so there's that application. All right, so let's try something else. Let's go see, let's test it on a real mobile device. So here is my my camera looking at an iPod here. Boom, and then move that over. And this thing was the PO5 demo. All right, so now we got to do some fancy typing. So PO, PO. This is where I should make the URL shorter, perhaps, because this little iPod keyboard is tiny. Po5 uh, dash HTML uh, 5, and then, uh, yep, dot rhcloud dot com. Let's see if I got that right. There we go. So here's the, you know, the nice thing about pushing it up to the cloud is I now can access it through any device anywhere in the world, uh, and 3G connection. This is actually running on a Wi-Fi connection because it's an iPod. But you notice here, I'll go into the first name field, and you can see there's the regular keyboard. If I hit next, there's the email keyboard with the at sign on it. If I go next, there's the phone number keyboard. So there you can see that HTML5 magic happening. And then of course, if I add the user, we'd see it show up here on the. Um, I won't bother with that. But that's an example of end-to-end -end HTML5 deployment into the cloud.